Well, hi, everyone. We're back with the Master Books podcast. Today, we are talking about science courses, and we are specifically talking about our opportunities for you to help your students learn science with an additional instructor, Brian Young, over at masterbooksacademy.com. Brian is here, and he is sharing all the wows of his courses. Some of them, we don't have time to go through all of them, but there's so many fun experiments, so many exciting things to learn, and he has such a great way to present them. You're going to love this. Here at Masterbooks, we are dedicated to help you disciple your children and develop a strong faith as a family. With Pro Bible Homeschool curriculum and beautiful books that honor God as Creator. We offer online courses to help your family worship and serve God. You will also find morning baskets and devotionals for the whole family. Our mission is ink on paper to touch eternity, and we have been publishing Christian books for this purpose since 1975. Find your Pro Bible Homeschool curriculum at masterbooks.com. All right, well, Brian, welcome to the Masterbooks podcast. It's great to have you with us again. Oh, it is so good to be back. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you are joining us from someplace very special, and I know they're going to be wondering about it the whole time we're talking. So go ahead, get that out of the way. Tell everybody about your ministry and what you have going on back there. Yeah, uh, we are basically filming right now. If you can hear a little echo or whatever, I am in the Boneyard Creation Museum that we have put together in Broken Bow, Nebraska. And so you might even see on some of the curriculums that we do, I actually film from the Semisaurus Mobile Creation Museum. And so this is a, a new museum that we put together. And so that's, uh, you see a dinosaur in the back in one of the 11 rooms that we have here. And so if you hear some strange things, some water running, that's the little creek that's running through here as well. But uh, that's where we're at and just thrilled to be able to be here to share it. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you for being such an amazing instructor over at masterbooksacademy.com. We have so many students who are excited to connect with you. Their moms have told us that when they're doing something to do with their science course and their experiments that you show on the courses that they want to show them to you. So we have masterbooksacademy.com um, where those courses are going on, but we also have Masterbooks app where the students can show through their moms things that they're working on. So we love getting to see that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's been a, a blast for me um, even to hear some of the things that the kids and parents have been saying. I've heard many parents say that I'm learning so much as well. And so that's always exciting to hear. It is. And I love that we can take curriculum from the book and make it so alive, so real with your instruction. So let's talk about some of the wows that you bring to the table when you, um, with your instruction. So the, at masterbooksacademy.com, all of the video lessons are pre-recorded, and your students will go through that when you have it scheduled for your own students. So you don't have to be at the computer at a certain time. You can use a laptop, you can use your um, iPads, whatever tablets, whatever you have to use and then do this course. The student can do the course with you, the mom and Brian, or there are some in the older ages who can be more independent and do the course um, with Brian as well. So I want you to tell us about some of the fun things that they'll love. Well, you know, I think some of the fun things are we've got experiments uh, a lot of with some of the older classes like biology, chemistry, physics, we do do labs uh, mm -hmm. every week, but we also try to, in some of the other courses then, do other uh, fun experiments, even if they weren't in the book, just some things to add on to show some of the same concepts that are being taught. Uh, mm -hmm. You might, uh, some of them, I, I think it was in astronomy, we talked about the origin of the laws and the supposed Big Bang, which we don't really believe in. But uh, we talked about how they could make thermite. And we took two steel balls and you could smack them together here and get sparks to fly off. Wow. More than others. But bottom line is just some sort of hands-on experiment 
for it. Maybe in some cases, some dry dad jokes, <laughs> but <laughs> some things to tie things together and mm -hmm. uh, let them experience creation and experience the science. Um, one of the things that I try to do in really all of the videos, whether it be the, the younger ones in the fourth grade or all the way up into the high school, was to include a lot of creation material that sometimes when we have to teach the sciences, uh, there are certain concepts that we have to get across and the creation message can get left behind. Mm -hmm. And so we've added a lot to the curriculum. And so I think one of the wows for me of the curriculums that we did was the, the bonus information beyond what was in the textbook already to add those creation teachings in there so that our, our kids are prepared to go out into the world and realize, you know, that, that God is not only an amazing, uh, you know, powerful God, but he's a loving, creative God as well. And we see that, you know, all through creation and how to defend their faith when they get into conversations with people and just in each of those topics, uh, yes. how it applies to life. You nailed it. We want them both to learn the facts, which will always point to God as creator. And we also want them to enjoy what God has made, enjoy the wonder and the wow of what he has done and help them see if he can do this, what else has he done? What, what, what else can he do? Absolutely. Yeah, it is. It's remarkable. It, it's beyond our imagination. And I know that in some of the courses, we, we even talk about the epigenetics, which is really uh, the newest and greatest, I think, wow for creation. It literally blows evolution out of the water. You know, we've been taught for years and years. We see all of these different examples of look at this fish and that fish or, mm -hmm. or you know this frog and that frog or you know this thing has a little bigger nose than this one and that's evolution and all of these little changes mm -hmm. and even creationists we've actually not been teaching it quite accurate because we gave uh really the fall and the curse credit for why we see these changes rather than giving the sovereignty and power of god the credit and so what we've now discovered is that in epigenetics uh, as an example, I use a lot from uh, the Institute for Creation Research even. They talk about uh, northern pike when they go and eat a fish in a lake. If it's a, a bass or a perch or something like that, nothing happens. But if they eat the Cretan carp, they will eat that thing and then they excrete it out as they go to the bathroom. And the rest mm -hmm. of the fish in the lake are kind of going, that smells like Bob. <laughs> and they realize that, you know, one of their cousins has been eaten. And within 24 hours, the shape of the fish changed completely. All the, the carp in that lake will change just in 24 hours. Now, they used to say, oh, it would take millions of years for these things. And it's oh. mutations. And it's because of, you know, oh. uh, chance mutations, mistakes. Well, it isn't a mistake that causes that. It's pre-programmed information in that fish allowing it to make these changes because the environment is changing and they recognize that. And so there are many studies that are being done showing from, you know, temperature changes to mm -hmm. uh, the, the kind of food they're eating. And it, to me, that's just, wow, it makes God and his power explode from the pages. And I love that to, like you said, just see God everywhere. Yes. I love that too. And I love that we get to be a part of that for all of these families all over the world. Isn't that a gift that technology oh, can connect us and connect you? You're there in Oklahoma, but technology can connect you to children all over the world, Canada, Australia, America, Kenya. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about master books is I really do. You know, I go around and do a lot of the homeschool curriculums, uh, the conferences, Mm -hmm. And what amazes me is there's a lot of Christian curriculum out there that doesn't really give answers to the kids for uh, creation, you know, to defend mm -hmm. the faith. They may mm -hmm. talk about God and God is creator, but that's the extent of it. And Master Books goes a lot deeper to give them answers to defend the faith. And I think that's so important. And so I'm so appreciative of what Master Books is doing. Well, and that makes me think about something I've been studying in the Bible, just about idols 
and how anything other than the creation story is going to lead to idolatry of some kind. And we don't want that for anyone because it comes with a great cost. And so I'm grateful to work for this company that helps families bring the truth to their children and shape the next generation. So let's talk about some of the specific courses. I know um, from working here that a lot of people love elementary zoology and elementary paleontology. So tell us a couple of things about those courses that families will love. Yeah, you know, in elementary zoology, I think that's one of the things you're going to see is some of the design in animals as well. Um, We're going to talk about dinosaurs a lot as well, because, you know, I think more and more all the time, Christians are beginning to realize that, yes, you know, dinosaurs did live with people. They are in the Bible, maybe not called dinosaurs, but other names and so on. Uh, But there's so much more than that that I think our children need to be able to answer um, the design factors, like we were saying before, that this isn't a result of mistakes. This is a result of pre-programmed information and a loving God who knew the, the curse sin was going to take place. And so he programmed everything to be able to survive in an ever-changing environment. Mm-hmm. And uh, just to be able to answer those questions, you know, dinosaurs, did they go on Noah's Ark? Uh, how, how did they fit? Uh, how many animals would fit on Noah's Ark? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what did they eat? Uh, you know, all these different kinds of questions. Were they really uh, afraid or were they mean like uh, the movies and all of the books seem to portray? Uh, were they as all as big as the books and movies seem to portray? And there's a lot of things out there that we have believed simply because we've heard it so many times, but it actually doesn't line up with even science or the Bible. And so to really expose some of those things, even at a young age, to get them thinking more biblically with a biblical mm-hmm. worldview, uh, that's kind of where those courses are going to go. Um, again, the zoology, uh, you're going to learn a lot about some amazing designs in animals and uh, the paleontology. I think there's a lot focused on the, the dinosaurs and, and that type of thing in that course there. I love that. I love that um, the zoology, we talk a lot about the fact that you can take that course and it's like a field trip, basically. You can go on a field trip to apply everything that you've learned, but the course itself is so involved. It's like going to the zoo and then adding your lessons to it. That just gives it an even more um, excitement to feel like they know more. And then, then when they go to the zoo, I've heard this so many times, they're able to pinpoint the lies on the signs that are evolutionary based. Yes. I believe one of those courses, and I, I kind of get them confused, which I did mm-hmm. which on sometimes, but I believe that that's one of them that we went and I actually filmed a number of things in the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo, which has okay. been rated the best zoo in the world. And wow. so we recorded a lot of things there. So like you said, it's, it's like going on a field trip to, mm-hmm. to be able to see some of these things and then discuss the, the design of those animals there. So, yeah. Right. So speaking of field trips, let's talk a little bit about elementary paleontology and where you filmed that and how exciting that is. Yeah, I think that's one we did in the semi-source mobile mm-hmm. create museum that we have. Um, and so... Basically, uh, one of the things our ministry did is we put together this semi-truck and it's a self-guided audio tour that you go through the museum in three different rooms. Um, And so I took different stations within that museum and focused on that, whether it be from the Ice Age to, uh, you know, again, dinosaurs, Noah's Ark, uh, to design, to even some of the the frauds and fake things that scientists have believed in. And so uh, all different kinds of stations in that museum. And we recorded quite a bit uh, right there. So rather than the museum having to come to you, you get to, I guess, see it on film instead. So Right. And it's so great for this winter season, especially because you're home, it's cold, people can't go outside, there's a good bit of illness going around. It can be in this time of year. And so doing these courses online just gives you an out without having to leave the house. Yes. Yes. Because you're taking us there. 
And right now it's uh, about two degrees below zero here in Nebraska. So I'm, I'm all about, you know, keeping that field trip at home. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's cold. Oh my goodness. Well, what about applied engineering? What can you tell us about that course? Yeah, applied engineering is one that we really did focus a lot on the design of animals uh, because it amazes me. There's a whole new field of science that kids can go into now called biomimicry. And basically what it is, is studying nature and animals and seeing the design in them. And then we copy that design to improve the technologies that we have. We've, we've done all we can and we don't know how to improve it. All of our lab coats, you know, all of our intelligence, we can't figure it out. So we have to go to these animals that supposedly evolved by accidents and mistakes. Mm -hmm. And basically what we're saying is mistakes are smarter than we are. <laughs> so that that yes. is not the case at all. It's God's design that we're actually copying. And so it shows the designs of many of our technologies and things that we are benefiting from today actually are coming from God and his first and initial design in the animals or plants or whatever it might be. And so we're seeing that the en applied engineering is really applying the God's engineering to our world. And it just, it's fascinating. I think people will be shocked to see how many things that we have, thousands of things that we have today are really to be credited to God. We're just plagiarizing his wisdom his qualities and intelligence. And so often not giving him the credit. So oh, this yeah. course allows students to learn how to give God the glory for those things, to give yeah. him credit where credit is due and not to yeah. have such a lack of wisdom as to say, puffed up, so-and-so did that. You know, we, we are as humans, but as Christians, we have to be so careful not to glorify the created more than the creator. Absolutely. Yeah. It, one thing that comes to mind in that course is uh, they've taken like moth antenna, cut mm -hmm. the moth antenna off and will attach it to a drone, a little drone. And it will actually go and find certain scents, you know, uh, smells. It, it, it only lasts about eight hours, mm -hmm. but they're able to, it, it can sense things and find things better than anything we can create. And it's just by taking the antenna off of a moth and applying it to our own created technologies. Just wow. remarkable. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, the book that goes along, one of the books that goes along with that course is Made in Heaven. And I highly recommend that. It's so fascinating. Part of that course, you can purchase it separately or use it along with the course and speaking of that, we want to talk a little bit about the fact that these courses that you are instructing, this is an enrichment. It adds on to what is already in the book. So you're helping them go through the lessons and you're also bringing more to the lesson than they would have had. Is that right? Yes. I. You can always do the courses without these enrichments, but mm -hmm. I feel like these enrichments have added so much to the course that um, when I'm at the homeschool conferences, I highly recommend getting them simply because it will expand not only the knowledge of the course, but I think really make it a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. And in some of the older grades, some of it is even helpful in taking some of the more difficult concepts and explaining them, uh, you know, especially when you get into the biology and transcription and, you know, the genetic aspect of things. Um, it can be very helpful just to understand those more difficult concepts. Absolutely. Now let's talk a little bit about the high school courses and specifically the labs that go along with biology, chemistry, and physics. Tell us what your students are going to um, find, what they'll enjoy, how this is could be actually better than having to do the experiments at home by themselves. Yeah. Uh, what we did with those, really all of those labs, we're just going to really do the lab that's in the book and in the workbook uh, so you can follow along step by step. And it, it's going to do a couple of things. Number one, it can save you a lot of money. Um, you can buy a lab kit through Masterbooks for mm -hmm. these courses, but I think that's $300 plus. 
right. to buy the lab itself, let alone mm -hmm. then you still have the books to purchase. Mm -hmm. And so those labs, <coughs> excuse me. And so those labs, you know, when we do them step by step, you could actually do those then without having to buy that lab kit. Mm -hmm. And you're still getting credit because you're doing the lab and you're going to be able to answer the questions uh, as we go through the lab as well. One of the things I tell people is the way the course is laid out is one day you do the lab and then the next day you're actually doing the answers to the lab. I in the video tell them just do both those days at the same time. So you can actually save some time okay. uh, by doing that. And then that way everything is, you know, all fresh in your mind as you're answering the questions and so on. But uh, so it will save you money. It helps do the lab yourself so that you uh, can save a lot of time there as well because uh, you don't have to gather all the materials. And some of these things, uh, the lab itself, I, I know a couple of them took me two, three hours to do. And we were able to condense that so that while we're waiting for something, we just cut and then you can come back. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's already the waiting process is over on video. So most of the labs we were able to do in 20 minutes to 30 minutes or something like that. Some of them might be 40, 45 minutes, but it did save a lot of time. Um, the other thing is uh, I think that it does, uh, we were, it allows me to kind of talk through some of the processes. I think to understand the labs a little bit more than what you can, if you're only doing the books uh, by yourself. And then of course, uh, when we're not doing the labs, there's also additional experiments or fun things that we tried to add on to, you know, expound upon what you're already learning in the book. Um, and, you know, more difficult concepts, like I said, be able to talk through them that way. And so whether it be the physics or the biology or, or the chemistry or any of those, it's all going to be the same as far as that goes. Now, some of the labs, you know, I didn't have, uh, I wasn't the one that wrote the book mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of going along with just what they did on those labs. And that's why I decided in some cases to add a couple of extra things that may be a little bit more fun nice. than some of the, you know, typical things that you need to do. So mm -hmm. regardless of whether you do the video or do it yourself, you will get credit. It counts for, you know, your accredited, um, credit that you need for your education. And we do want to encourage everybody to check with your homeschool, state homeschool regulator, whoever says yes and no to the credits, you need to know for sure with your state if that will work for you. But we have um, plenty of people who have said it's working for them. So yeah. we, we are excited to offer those um the freedom for you to do something different, to save you time, to save you money, and to help your students enjoy it more. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and I mean, you're saving so much money by doing those. It's, it's, uh, I think a really good deal. And I, you know, again, when I go to these other homeschool conferences, I'm amazed at what people charge for videos. Um, mm. it, it's pretty remarkable. I feel like Master Books has done a great job of not only providing the answers, but providing a very good service at a very low cost. Yeah, we those courses are so affordable and we thank you for investing in the education of so many people by being an instructor. My pleasure. So I think you told me you have some an experiment for us you're gonna show us. Yeah, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, something called cymatics. I talk about this in, I, I don't know if it was zoology or applied engineering or one of the courses, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is cymatics is a study of sound. And I use this not to say this is exactly how God did things, but oftentimes when we read scripture and when we see that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and God said, and boom, there it is. Mm -hmm. And we think God created by his word. That's what John tells us in the New Testament as well. And it's like, how do we conceptualize that? It just doesn't seem like there's any way that you can just say, let there be and boom, snaps into existence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to show you that actually sound does bring order into existence. And so you almost might be able to picture God saying, <laughs> and form comes about. 
Now, wow. again, I'm not saying that's what he did or how he mm -hmm. did it even. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is I think this is going to help you conceptualize that sound does make form and mm -hmm. they're, they're, you know, it puts a little meat to it, makes it a little bit more understandable than this vague concept of God speaking right. things into existence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and I'll kind of narrate as we go. Okay, perfect. And so what I have here is a, a little board that, as I said, is going to show you somatics. I've got uh, a shaker that has some sand or salt in it. Any of those type of things work. And I've just put some of it on our plate. Now I've got a Bluetooth speaker underneath here. And what we're going to do is just show you some of uh, the different frequencies of sound. And so I'm going to turn it on here. And I'm going to turn it up a little. This is at 440 hertz. And you can see that shape come about. Now I'm going to change the frequencies. 489. Notice that almost looks like plant cells there. Yes. And that's at 1,438 hertz. And wow. Every time I change the frequency, we get different shapes that come about. And that same shape comes about every time I play that frequency. And hmm. so I'll just do a couple more here. Get really high. That's so fascinating. Go back down. 1698, 1334, 908, 686 hertz. And so as I change, as you can see, there's just different shapes. Now, certain frequencies look like the back of a turtle or, you know, uh, like I said, even some that form the shape of a cross. It's just amazing to see that there is some sort of order that comes out of sound. So I'll kind of pick my thing back up here. But as you, as you can see, when God created, now maybe that little makes a little bit more sense. Right. To perhaps that he could speak things just by the spoken word. Well, not perhaps, we know he did, but mm -hmm. perhaps. It worked some way like that. Again, not saying for sure that that's how he did it, but nonetheless, it does make a, a very difficult concept a little bit more understandable. I am amazed by that. I'm just amazed. That gives, it just gives you some context for the yeah. Bible. I love it. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for you sure. bet. That's the kind of things that we like to do in these curriculums is just to mm -hmm. make more difficult concepts a little bit more understandable. And I think that every bit of that that we have is a little bit extra to help us defend the faith. And even just, you know, when people challenge us to, to encourage us to be able to stand. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for showing us that and for talking to us today, being the instructor at masterbooksacademy.com for so many science courses. We know so many students have loved them. We've gotten so much feedback from the moms. And so I want to encourage everybody, you can find the links in the show notes to, um, for first of all, to these courses, second of all, to the video so that you can watch, if you're just listening to this, so you can watch what just happened in that experiment. So we know some of you are watching by YouTube, some of you are listening. And so we just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to experience that experiment. I am I'm just amazed. So thank you so much. That was fun for me. Made my work day fun. Well, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. And, and thank you guys for all that you're doing there as well at Masterbooks. Absolutely. We want to bless every family that is listening and watching. And we do pray, Christ, that every student will be filled with the wonder of God. And that science will be just one of the ways that they will fall deeper in love with him and want to spend the rest of their lives wholly devoted to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, yeah.
Yeah. All right. Well, we will see you all back on the next episode. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us today for the Master Books podcast. It was really fun to do this with you today. We hope that you'll take a moment and rank and review the podcast wherever you are listening or watching so that others can find it more easily. We loved having you here and we look forward to being with you on the next podcast. It comes out every other week, Mondays at 5 a.m. See you then.